Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Cliff. And in this video, we'll be looking at enumerations. So far, we've been using built-in types to determine the kind of information that we can store in the variables in our programs. And so this allows us to store things like uh, numbers and text. Now that's been really useful, but just using these built-in types isn't helping me organize the data in my code. For example, in the soundboard program, I've got these magic numbers appearing in my code, like uh, number one meaning guitar and number two meaning piano. Now, the numbers are kind of irrelevant. They don't mean yeah. the numbers. They actually refer to a guitar or a piano. Yeah. And I'm having to keep track of this myself. Is there an easier way to do this, a more meaningful way? Yeah, so what we can actually use for this, where you have a, a list of options that you want to, to, so different kinds of instruments, for example, uh, we can create our own data type. So just like integer and string, we can create our own type. Uh, and in this case, it's called an enumeration. There are actually different kinds of types. This is one of those kinds. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the code. So we start off in main here, and the first thing that I do is I declare a variable option that's of the type integer. Yeah, so option stores a number. That's right, that's right. And the first thing that I do is I've made this other little function that's called read instrument, and that will, uh, that will return a value that the user en uh, enters. Yep, yeah, okay, so let's have a look at that function first. Yeah, so the first thing that I do is I, I print out a little, little message to the user to explain yep. to them what the numbers do, yep. and then I read the value from the user, Yep. And I do some data validation here, so it's stored in val, the val variable. Yeah. yeah. Make sure that they select something sensible. Yep. And then uh, the function returns that value. Okay. So it returns. Back to so main. basically, this is going to return a number between one and four. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's returning an integer. Yeah. Yeah. And that when we come back to main, that integer is stored in our option, option variable. Yeah. And then similar to the case video, I use I read that option value back, and that will select which one of the sound effects to play. Yeah. So one here is actually guitar and two here is piano. But yeah, um, three is bass and four is drum. Yeah, and they're the yeah, numbers so that I'm talking about. So you don't actually mean three here. No, really. no, 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 I, I want bass. You want to know if they've selected bass from the one up the top here. Yeah, that's right. All right, so one way that we could deal with this is to use some constants. So up the top, what we could do is declare uh, four constants, one saying that guitar is equal to the number one, yep. piano is equal to the number two, bass is number three, et cetera. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Uh, and that would mean then down in main here where you've got the case statement, we could have case of the option. So we read the value of the option variable. And if it is equal to guitar, which is the number one, yep. then it plays that sound effect. If it's piano, which is the number two, it plays the piano sound effect, et cetera. Yeah, okay, that's, that's really cool. Uh, it's made it way more readable in the case statement. But option is still storing an, an integer. It's still yeah. storing a number. And that doesn't seem very meaningful to me. Yeah. Is, there, is there a way that we can actually change the, the variable type to reflect what it is? Yeah, so uh, as you're saying, at the moment, the option variable can store any integer value. And so in the code here, it's not explicitly saying that this variable should only have you know, one of those four values. It should either be guitar, piano, bass, or drum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it, it's not it's not very different even from the start of the video where they were just numbers because they're still numbers. Yeah, and we've just made the it a bit. This is still better. They're this prettier. Better. They're prettier yeah. numbers. So what we can actually do is then, as we said before, use an enumeration. So this is where we come to creating our own type. Uh, so if we go right back to the top of this new file, what we've got here is the ability to to declare our own our own types. And here we're creating an instrument kind type and we're providing it with the list of values. Okay. And this is slightly different to, they're not variables, they yep. are now values. Okay. Like the number one, two, three, four before, but yep. now guitar is actually a value. And piano is actually a value and bass is a value and drum is a value. And anything which is an instrument kind variable yep. can have either the value guitar, piano, bass or drum. Okay, I, I think I understand how that works. Yeah, so that means down in main here, what we can do is change our option variable to use the instrument kind type. And that means it stores an instrument kind. Okay, so in, instead of integer there, I'm going to write instrument kind. And now I can only select one of those options that we declared in the type. 
Yes. There are some limitations based on the language, but we'll, we'll cover that later. But for the, if you're using it correctly, then you'll be assigning it one of those four values, yes. And so if we come back to our function now, the function can have the can return the instrument kind as well because you're wanting to read in the instrument. Okay, yeah. So that it yep. returns now an instrument kind, not just any old number. It returns either guitar, piano, bass, or drum because that is the values that instrument yep. kind has. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, that's that's great. So just anywhere where I would have previously had integer, I can now use this this custom data type that we've made. Yeah, that's right. Because it's a, it is of equal typiness. Yep. That's not really a word. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it's a data type as well. So instrument kind is now a type. We just created it. It's our own type. So just like uh, integer, which exists, yeah. we've done the same thing. Created our own type that says instrument kind. Okay. And so, it must have one of those values. Okay. So uh, what about if I wanted to add another instrument? Oh, well, we could just extend our uh, list of options here. So put comma and... Uh, violin, maraca, maraca, <laughs> what, whatever floats your boat. Okay, cool. Yeah, but let's let's finish this. So our read instrument function now returns an instrument. It actually kind. returns an instrument now. So yeah. already I'm happy. But what we need to do is change that code a little bit. So at the moment the user is going to enter one, two, three, four. Now that is going to be a number still. Yeah. But we've now got to be able to convert that number into. Uh, an instrument kind. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, because there's no button on the keyboard for guitar. That's correct. Yeah, yeah there's no okay. guitar button. So okay. So yeah, so we're still going to be mapping the the user input to the um, the type that we've made, the enumeration. Yeah. Okay, and so we can just use like the case value, uh, the the case, case again. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. Yeah. So the case statement we can use again, and we can map so we can say based on the case of this variable, which I know is an integer. Yeah. Because well, the user's going to type a number in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if it's one, uh, then what we want to do is return the result uh, guitar, guitar, which is an instrument kind. That's right. Which yeah. is now see. So we've got the actual value that we're using there is guitar, not one or two or three. It's, yeah, yeah. It's okay. guitar. And when the user has selected two, we use the value piano. Piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And where they do th yeah, yeah. So yeah. now guitar, piano, bass, and drum are, are values. They're actually the they're, things. Yeah. They're like. They were like what one, two, and three, four would have been. Yeah, uh, there before. Oh, great! And so when it comes back into main, we can store that in that instrument kind variable. Sure. So, uh, is there any problem with using that that option, which is now an instrument kind, in the case statement? Uh, inside main. Yeah. Uh, no, this is actually one of the best bits, I think. So our case statement now, uh, we say case of option, and you have to list all of the valid values that that case can have. Yeah. And so here you don't put one, two, three, four now, we put... Yep, guitar gu is actually guitar. Is That's right, yeah. Because yeah. ah. guitar is the value guitar, and piano is the value piano, because we just, we made up those values. They now exist. Ah. There is in your program a guitar. This is great. So like when I come back to my soundboard in like six months time, I'm not going to have to wonder what was what. I can just know yeah. guitar when you've got is like guitar. Yeah, 50 instruments and 27, oh, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah. Oh, no, that's, yeah, that, that, that's great. I think that's, that's really improved this code. Yeah. One last thing we can do, getting back to numbers, the way the computers store instrument or any enumeration, so instrument kind in this case, is actually going to be as a number anyway. Okay. So it is just an integer. Okay. Which that... we can take advantage of back in read instrument. So in read instrument at the moment, what we've got is this case statement down the bottom here where I say one and we return the result guitar. Yeah. Two, we return the result piano. Yeah. Three, we return the result bass. If we take advantage of the fact that we know that internally the computer is representing guitar as actually the value zero, because yep. it starts at zero for the first one, so zero, one, two, three. Okay, yep. Uh, what we could do is we could just map that value across by saying... Uh, get the value of the instrument, the value the user has typed, subtract one from that because... Starting at one for guitar yeah, for, sound, yeah. For humans. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pesky humans have to start at one for things. Yeah. <laughs> so we have one... Silly human. <laughs> so we have one for guitar. So we need to subtract one to get that back to zero. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's that would just go... offsetting the menu, yeah? Yeah, basically. Okay. So that would take our, the value that they've entered, say one, subtract one from it, so it gives us zero, and we then cast that to an instrument kind. And that tells the compiler 
you know that integer here, I, I don't want you to look at it as a, a pesky little integer. Yeah. I want you to, to reinterpret that as a, an instrument kind. And so it will then convert it, say, well, what you actually meant in that case was guitar. Yeah, okay. Uh, and if you did, say, they typed in three, we would subtract one from that, so that would be two. Yeah. Two would be base. Yeah. And so that would return back the value base. And so we don't need that case statement. So if you did have 50 instruments, you could very easily oh, convert yeah, from just, just in the one line. a number. Yeah. Okay. From a number to a matching value, so a guitar, piano, bass, or drum, which means that rest of your code where you've got guitar... You'd still you wouldn't use numbers here and cast that number. That would just be stupid. Yeah. Down in down in main here, you would use guitar because you want the guitar for your code, but yeah. sometimes input and output. Yeah, yeah. Well, the I, number itself is a bit easier. I, I can I can see how useful that would be, particularly as the program grows in complexity. Yeah. Um, I'm having a, a little bit of trouble trying to understand the difference between we're telling the, the computer that we want this own variable type, but the computer's mapping it to a number anyway. But I think I get the point. Like, yeah. Because the computer doesn't know the what a guitar is, is. Well, that's well, for the computer, it, it's a machine that works on numbers. Everything is a binary number, basically, inside the computer. Yeah. And so everything gets back mapped back to numbers. I mean, all the text that we have on the screen here isn't actually text. It's one massive number. Whoa. But let's just not think <laughs> about that. Mind blown. Yeah, okay. That, bad <laughs> idea. But anyway... Uh, no, we, no. Can, we can ignore most of that. So if so, it's yeah. really just making the user experience a little bit better for the programmers yeah. and for the for, programmer. Yeah. yeah. In this case, uh, enumerations won't really help the end user so much. Uh, it's more for us programmers. It makes okay. our life easier. Okay, Cliff. Do you want to talk through an execution of this program? Yeah, sure thing, Andrew. So the program starts and begins at main. Yep. And the first thing that the program does is it allocates space for a variable named option. Yep, and which is big enough to store... An instrument kind, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so we've got this space to store an instrument, any instrument that we want. Yep. And then uh, the first thing that we do is we call the read instrument function, which will assign that option variable. Yeah, so we've got the yeah this assignment statement. We get the result of the read instrument function, and we assign that result to the option variable. Yeah. So let's have a look at... Let's go up and have a look at, at read instrument. Sure thing. So here we've got the function declaration, and you can see here that we've made a uh, return type result of instrument kind. Yeah, so this is going to return an instrument kind, and we've got that result variable. Ready to go. Yeah. Ready to go. So there's space yeah. allocated to that, and uh, we've, it's also allocated space for a variable named val. Now val's an integer. Yeah, cool. So we've got two variables, result, which is an instrument kind, and yep. val, which is our integer. Integer. That's right, that's right. So we, we print out the lines that tell the user yep. what's going on, and then we use the, the read integer function to read that value into val. All right, so what, what number are we going to have the user type in? Let's go with five. Yeah, I think we should. There's nobody, one, two, three, four, who, you're yeah. going to go five. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. that's right. All right, so five is then stored into val. That's right, yeah, yeah. So uh, here we've got the, the while loop here. What that yep. will do is it will read that val. So is val less than one? No. Cool. <laughs> All right, but is val larger than four? It is. Okay, so false or true mm -hmm. is... True. Cool. So because while true, so we're going to run the loop. Yep. So we'll print out, please enter a number between, a value between one yep. and four. We'll read another integer again. But I think this, this user is particularly persistent. So I think this time they're going to enter minus five. Okay. So uh, read integer has been called, minus five has been... Uh, assigned to val. Yeah, so minus five is returned. We assign it to val. Yep. yep, that's right. And so then we go back because it's a while loop. We go back to the while and we check the condition again. Yep. So is val less than one? It is. Okay. Now because we've got the or there, do we need to check the second part? No, we don't because it already knows that it's. Uh, well, yeah. It's no, true. because it's true. True or. Yeah. True, anything true, is true. True or true is true. Yeah. True or true or false, or false is, is true. true. So yeah. so therefore it doesn't even bother checking that second part, and it will just run the body of the loop again. Yeah. No, that's that's called short circuit evaluation. Okay. Cool. All right. So we then print out enter one and four again. This time let's let's we could keep playing this game all day. <laughs> but. All right. I think I think the user gets the point now and has entered the number three. Three wants to play some cool. bass. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. So, so three is stored into Val. That's right. Now is we then get to the end of the while loop and it do goes still back jumps to the test back, again. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And val is less than one. Is that no, true? No, no, no. Okay. False. So we, we we have to check the or part because yep. false we could still be true. Yeah. Is val larger than four? It is not. Okay. So therefore, false or false is false. False. 
we don't run the loop again. So we've validated. It's validating yep. the yep. data. So it, yep. it's exited the loop and we continue down and... So now we've got this result is assigned instrument kind val minus one. What that's going to do is subtract one from val. So what's val is... Val is currently three. Three minus one is... Is two. And now what we do here, this is the, this is the magic bit we were talking yeah, about before. Yeah. This is called a typecast. Uh, the typecast will convert that, instead of now being the number two, into being the... The enumeration. The enumeration value, which is... The third one, because yeah, we started zero. Because it started at zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zero. I remember now. I think I'm getting this. Yeah, so that will be base. And so we actually store base in the result. Okay. So that is then what is returned yeah. by this function. So, so that's where we convert the, the user's integer input into the actual instrument kind. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And so now base, this when this function ends, it disappears off the stack. Yeah. And uh, base is returned back and assigned into, into our option. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So we're back here and we're going to be reading that option back in the case statement. Yep. We're going to be we're going to be using that to select which uh, line to run. Yep. So it doesn't run the guitar cuz bass is not guitar. It is not no it piano. Doesn't run piano. No. Bass is bass. Yep. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it plays the bass sound effect. Yep. Uh, it then skips over the drum, it skips over the else, yep. uh, and we come down, we just get our, uh, when the sound is finished playing, press enter to continue. Yeah. Yeah. Too easy. Cool. So here we've got some further examples. Um, so we've got a, a short example here that's probably the one that I've used the most, which is uh, mapping the months of the year, like yep. whenever you want to deal with, with uh, uh, date information in programs, this one's a great one means that you don't need to keep track of numbers. When, yeah, that's right. When it comes to uh, American standard or the rest of the world standard for which yeah. way the dates go, it's really, really handy. Yeah. Um, another one here is, is using uh, a direction. Oh, so this, this is just mapping similar, oh, to the, similar to the months, the, uh, the cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, probably good for games. Yeah, and we can use things like random numbers. So this here is, is casting uh, a random number into a direction so this would be a way of having something you know head off in a random direction so that's, that's taking advantage again of the fact that the computer still treats it as a number that's right oh, yeah. sweet yeah yeah, yeah cool yeah. so yeah in our code we want to keep it treated as a direction as much as possible but, but we can use these nasty little tricks i guess is the, the technical term uh to take numbers and turn I, them into I, I think i think it's clever nasty yeah. or not <laughs> Uh, we have another example here, so the idea of you know different sales types. So if you had like a point of sale yeah. interface or something like that, you could keep track of that. Like yeah, yeah. or any anywhere you've got a list of options. So direction can be in this case we only had north, south, east, or west. Month, so yeah. it's either January, February, etc. Yeah. It's not some other value. Anywhere we've got a you know you could have security clearance level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, different levels. Yeah, Mo uh, a model model type for like a, a game or something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for enumerations. Enumerations allow us to create our own data type to represent a list of valid options. And we can then use that to declare variables where you want to store one of those values. And they work, I think they work particularly nicely with the case statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so coming up next, we've got um, video on records. Yeah, so the, the, we've got the other different types of custom data types. So records is one to store multiple values inside a single Composite type. Yeah. Um, we've also got pointers. Yeah. Yep. Or you could look, move on to the next big topic, which is arrays. Yeah, yeah very they're, nice. They're cool. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for this, for watching, I guess. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching, and we hope to catch you next time. Bye. This has been a Spindle introduction.